What up, Stamp Gang? This is Sharday of Sharday No Days Off. Happy Sunday. Happy Self Sunday. I know I have not sat down in this spot on a Sunday in quite a while because honestly, life. Um, I feel like it's been a challenge since I, I came back to get myself back into the groove and just like things have been coming up. There's a lot with the end of the school year and just a lot has been on my plate that has made getting these videos out regularly just a little bit more challenging. However, we're here. We are here right now, you and me. And if you're new here, thank you for stopping by. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button below and turn on the notification bell and become a part of my little tribe, my Stamp Gang family. And make sure you hit the notification bell so you know when I post every week and I do post every week. This Self Sunday, we are talking about pressure and particularly about, you know, the pressures of being a YouTuber. I was uploading the vlog, uh, the travel vlog for the week and I came across a video by Roberto Blake who I watch because he does, you know, tech videos and YouTube growth videos and all of that. And he was responding to a Casey Neistat video about the pressures of being a YouTuber. And it resonated with me. Um, especially because, you know, I mean, I don't have hundreds of thousands of subscribers yet. I don't even have thousands of subscribers yet. But the pressures of being a YouTuber are super, super real. And I kind of wanted to weigh in on that as somebody who is a really small YouTuber, but who also deals with, you know, issues of wellness and mental health and things like that. I'm going to link the videos to both Roberto Blake and Casey Neistat's videos below in the description box so that you can check them out. I've said this before in my video about things that I wish I knew before I started YouTube. I actually talked about this very thing um, briefly about burnout and about how much work YouTube is. And it's true. YouTube is a lot of work. The, the filming, the uh, creation of graphics, the editing, you know, the hashtagging, the all, just so much stuff. Um, being on social media to uh, compliment your channel and bring people to your channel and bring people to YouTube and that, that, that. it's just, it's, it's a lot. Um, and it's a lot. I can imagine if this is something that you do full time like this is what you decide to make your career out of for now or whatever a lot of youtubers a vast many youtubers are small youtubers and they are youtubers that do this in addition to something else like they're in school they have families they have a job like and i personally fall in that category y'all know by now and if you're new you don't i am a full-time graduate student i am a phd candidate i work i substitute teach i do contract work and then i do this on the side um to try to you know build a presence and offer you know my sort of insight and the amount of work that i put into this channel and the amount of money that i put into this channel it is just a lot you know you have seen those of you who have seen me grow like i've started um from pretty small means and i've been able to gradually and very blessed to gradually work my way up and you know it has been a journey i would not trade it for anything but also it has been a lot of work in two years i have you know, experience YouTuber burnout um, a few times. And to the point where I'm like, do I even still want to do this? Is this even still worth it? And, um, you know, I have to really, really think about what it does to, you know, my life and my relationships. As a matter of fact, this week, this weekend, I took I have been taking a break from social media and just you know trying to get my video uploaded and not like really trying to do a whole lot on social media because it's hard to 
do YouTube and not also be a social media personality. And, you know, I took a break from that because it was just so overwhelming. It was so overwhelming, like the constant, you know, being plugged in and responding and, you know, putting things up and figuring out captions and hashtags and trying to make it go with this and this and this. It's just, it was a lot on me mentally and you know it's a lot making yourself a public figure you know just putting your life in various uh stages out there for people to consume as entertainment and with that you know you get uh, you get a lot of people you get negative feedback you get you know, people just wanting more and more of your time and of your transparency and of your life and things like that. And it can it can really, really weigh you down. Like Roberto Blake was saying something that I really resonate with and that is that, you know, a lot of YouTubers are introverts. <laughs> it's not a big deal for us to get in front of this camera and to talk to you all out there but you know we're actually just talking to our camera lens in the comfort of home and a work chosen safe space and all that and and that's so true for me not as much because i'm a travel vlogger so you know i'm out um amongst the people in various places and spaces and countries and cultures and stuff with a camera on a tripod talking to it and people are staring at me or they'll come and like come and get in my video like what happened with the lady in Vegas. Amazing. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so um and it's a lot. Like you become a very public figure. I have had people take pictures with me. I've had people just stop and talk to me and I don't mind it. I really don't. I love when people come and talk to me. I love when people ask what I do and find it fascinating and all that good stuff. I love talking to you all. You guys, like I said, y'all are my internet family. Y'all are my people. And I'm so thankful for like the platform to do this, but do not be mistaken. This is a lot on me as an introvert. Um, just, you know, writing scripts, coming up with this, sitting down, you know, editing, going places, deciding what places I'm going to film, you know, planning trips and saying, okay, what videos are going to be um, filmed this trip. So it's easy. It's real easy to burn out. It's a lot of pressure to do that from week to week whether you have 9.5 million subscribers or you have 262 it's it's not that different it's just a larger volume and you realize that i have realized that people are just can have the capacity to be very very evil like people just say stuff and you know make comments out of ignorance um, either willful or, you know, not reading that a video is like a year old, so conversion rates change from day to day. But, or, oh, you should ask, you know, somebody, whatever, whatever. And I'm just like, dude, it's entertainment. And also, what you get when you get somebody's video are highlights of everything that they filmed. There might have been hours of footage and you get seven minutes of it. 10 minutes of it and so you have to have a lot of grace for other people and you have to have a lot of grace for yourself and you have to sometimes you do need to take a break because that's a lot to a lot of weight to bombard yourself with and then you know still try to be happy and all that good stuff so I find that you know the whole YouTube platform it's it, it can be a lot and Casey said something that was also really really true that I did not realize until I started watching more um, of a breadth of videos like people videos will pop up I might recommend it and I watch all kind of videos like let's be honest I don't just watch travel videos I actually rarely watch other travel videos I do sometimes but mostly like I watch hair tutorials I watch makeup tutorials and I watch tech stuff stuff about photography and videography and like tech equipment and things like that because I'm a nerd um and 
he was right when he said like YouTube is different. Um, it's a whole different animal now because like when I first started really watching YouTube back in like 2010, 11, you know, people were just getting in front of a camera talking, maybe putting some music in there and calling it a day. But like this, you have small YouTubers, even like myself, who are putting out this high quality content and they're very small. Like there's this, like many niches are oversaturated and, you know, people from you know right where i am now are coming up with really good you know quality picture content i've seen plenty of people that have fantastic videos and they might have a thousand subscribers a few thousand at most or they have as many as i have or even just a little bit more than that and it's mind-boggling but say that to say you know you have your big youtubers like casey neistat and um you know other youtubers that have like hundreds of thousands of subscribers millions of subscribers and you still have those who like have quality content but you don't get to see them as much because they don't necessarily pop up on your recommenders because the algorithm i have not by any stretch mastered the algorithm and um there's just there's so many moving parts to YouTube and it's hard to figure all those things out to figure out how to grow your channel because they're constantly in flux they're constantly changing so it is it's a lot of pressure it's just one more added pressure and, and like I said that's what we're talking about so of course I'm not going to leave you without something practical that you can use um, when we talk about wellness and mental health you know Pressure is not just, you know, being a YouTuber, but life is riddled with different sorts of pressure. And, you know, we're all under the microscope in one form or fashion. So you have to take care of yourself and you have to figure out what you need to do to be more in touch with yourself and to make sure that you're okay at the end of the day. So things that I do, especially in terms of keeping my head on straight with this and all my other pressures, because, you know, this is cool, this is a priority, but this is not my major priority. My major priority is getting my dissertation finished. So that takes precedence. And then this is there and just all my other, you know, things that I care about and that, you know, are on my plate. So one of the things that I have really been starting to practice um, is gratitude. Gratitude is a big, big thing. If you make, um, being grateful a part of your daily life, it helps you to handle stresses a little bit better because you remember, you know, these are small bits in a bigger picture that you may or may not know what the big picture is. And so every day, um, every morning now when I do my devotional practice and I've been going hard at going back onto my devotional practice, I have um, been writing down things that I am grateful for and I challenged myself to write this down for the summer because usually I just do it in the car or whatever but I actually am writing it down in um, a gratitude journal and it's just a spare journal I had at the house and so every day I write I am grateful for and then I write at least five things that I am grateful for every day and I also try to make them uh, different so I'm not writing the same thing every day so the more you have to um, challenge yourself the more things you will find to be grateful for and it does help my quality of life it really does another thing that I am really big on is being present and it's really easy to not be present you know with the cell phones and social media you're always scrolling and intaking other people's lives and things like that or trying to record bits and pieces of your life um, and you miss out on things. You don't really get to enjoy things. So for example, um, today I was out at a, um, at a festival with my friends and my partner. And you know, yesterday, no not yesterday, uh, Friday, I went to two more festivals and I was going to film them. But then I said, no, I'm not gonna film. I'm just gonna live my life and sometimes you have to do that sometimes you have to say I'm gonna be off social media for a few days y'all have seen my social media fast it was the best thing I ever did and I may do another one um, but you know sometimes you have to unplug and make sure you're really looking at the world around you and you're taking it all in and you're taking in those moments and those help increase your quality of life because you're not sucked into everything being funneled through a device through 
through the web but that you remember that life is to be lived as you should live it in the present. Um, not get stuck on what somebody was doing an hour ago. Not get stuck on what you're going to post next on your feed or your timeline. But you also need to remember that your life is happening right now. Smile. Enjoy something. Go get some vitamin D. Sit in the sun. You know, laugh with your friends. So that is really important is to practice um, being present. And the last thing especially if you're in something that is really pressure ridden but that you love um is to remember why you started in the first place when it comes to youtube in particular it's really easy to get caught up in the numbers and the algorithm and the views and da, da 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 but it's so important it's so important to remember why you started your channel like for me i started my channel because my friends and family would ask me about my travels all the time and so I decided to create a platform where I could share that with them, answer those questions, but also help someone else who, you know, had the same questions about travel or who may feel intimidated by travel and say, hey, you know, I'm real normal. I'm real extra normal. You know, nothing fancy. I'm actually pretty meager living right around now. And I can, I travel. It's one of my priorities. It makes my life better. But also the fact that, you know, I really have been focused on my well-being, my mental health, my spiritual health, my emotional health, my physical health, and that is a journey and I want to show, share that with you so that, you know, somebody knows it's okay to take care of yourself and this, these are ways that you can do it. So you remember why you started and I put on my, um, my desk, which I don't know if you can see, it says the one and that's not some sort of personal, you know, amping myself up. It's, it's reminding me to remember the one. And by that, I mean not getting caught up in having, you know, the, hitting the 100,000 subscriber mark, which I would love to do, but remembering the one person, the one person that might see your video and be like, yo, that was amazing. That helped me. I appreciate that. And it has happened. Like I get comments and they're like, yo, this was so helpful. Thank you. That is, that's the goal. The one person, the one person that is positively affected by my presence online. So if you do that with, you know, not just YouTube, but with your regular life, you know, be more present, practice gratitude, remember why you started or the one person that you can help. It will help you to stay focused on the big picture and not get caught up in the little things that, um, make life that much more of a pressure cooker. I hope that helps. As always, friends, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend about the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.